I went ahead and handed this out for everybody so you can just have it for your use. Ginger got scared. The lady holding her paw de reached deftly over and picked up a long thing with an even longer skinny silver point. And before Ginger could pull her paw away, it was in her. She cried and she wanted to run, but she was held down tightly against the cold metal table. She stared at the thing in her paw for a time she could not measure. And she let out a long, slow sigh and laid down her head for the last time. I spent a long, lot of time this past week on the phone and driving to various pet shelters, talking to people who make the lives, who make their lives either living or make their living either working or volunteering in, in shelters for displaced pets. Whether it is, makes our load easier or gives us comfort, according to most scriptures, we were given responsibility for these creatures. I'm going to discuss the problem of pet overpopulation and the effect it has on the animals and the human and humans and the solutions you have, can partake in to help. Worldwide, pet overpopulation is an epidemic. There are not enough homes for all the companion animals and therefore they are ending up in overcrowded shelters and being abandoned to survive on their own. In the U.S., there are 45 cats and dogs for every person born. One in 10 dogs gets a home. One in 12 cats gets a home. 800 dogs and cats are killed every hour. In the Coachella Valley, it is an estimated, there are an estimated 2,000 animals in local shelters today, according to Animal Samaritans uh, in uh, Thousand Palms. In the U.S., there are over 8 million animals in shelters. According to Dr. Lo Emily Whitlock, Doctor of veterinary, me veterinary Medicine in Atlanta, there are 300 to 500 dogs and cats euthanized, killed every day within a 50 mile radius. And there are just not enough homes for them all. <coughs> the dogs, there are not enough homes for adoptions. Can you imagine how many dogs and cats are killed around the world every day? Even no kill shelters end up relinqu relinquishing sh dogs and cats that are uh, that they deem unadoptable to kill shelters. A pound in Birmingham, Alabama, is reported to kill 95 dogs out of every 100 that goes in in there. It's a vicious cycle. There are many pet reasons why there is pet overpopulation, but it's not the pet's fault. They are only doing what dogs do. According to the book. A member of the family, Caesar Milan's Guide to a Lifetime of Fulfillment with Your Pet, Random House, 2008. Some people want to blame it on the breeders, those who breed dogs and cats to sell to pet stores. This is actually not the cause, it's the people who buy the dogs and cats from these breeders, not realizing that they are making a commitment for 10 to 20 years. People enjoy collecting dogs, cats, puppies, and kittens, and exotic and endangered animals, not ever considering what it takes to take care of these dogs, the feeding, the, the shelter, the medicine, and just the companionship that these animals require. According to Jim Erickson, 2000, uh, the North Pole Animal uh, Rescue in North Pole, Alaska, I talked to him last on the 6th of July, a large number of uh, dogs bred for sled and work animals uh, that work on sled teams uh, who can no longer keep up or work with the rest of the team are set free where they are left to fend for themselves. They've never been sterilized, meaning they've never been spayed or neutered. This is also true for great racing greyhounds who don't race, who race and don't win. They're considered disp disposable. One in four animals in a shelter is considered a purebred. The reason for people not giving, having their pets spayed and neutered are endless. A few of the missing facts are, my pet will get fat and lazy. The truth is, is that the cats and dogs are fed too much. They're not exercised. The other myth is, uh, it's better for them to have a, a, their first litter. The truth is, according to veterinarians, it's best if they have 
if they never go into heat, if you have them sterilized by the time they're eight weeks old. The, my favorite myth is my children should experience the miracle of birth. The fact is that children rarely get to see this because the animals are usually born at night and in seclusion. The lesson that children really learn is that animals can be created and discarded as it suits the adults. It should be explained to the children that the real miracle of life is preventing the birth of some pets so that others may survive. Animals are abandoned to overcrowded shelters or left to fend for themselves in the wild. Diseases are rampant among animals in the wild and in shelters. Rabies is still a huge problem. It can be spread to your domestic animals and to you. Uh, in the desert, dehydration, starvation it, it are major problems for domestic animals who depend on the support of humans. They get into trash. They defecate on your lawns. They dig holes. Dogs, feral dogs can form dangerous packs and endanger other pets. Feral cats keep the rat population down, but they also kill the songbird population. They get hurt by cars, other animals, and sadly other humans. And then they continue to have puppies and they clog up shelters. The solution, I know you want to know what the solution is. Well, you are the solution. In an effort to improve public safety and reduce the number of stray dogs and cats, the city of Los Angeles has enacted an ordinance mandating that all dogs and cats be spayed and neutered uh, and also have a microchip implanted in them so that they can be identified. Other cities are following suit. The cost ranges from $50 to $100 and there are programs for low income and senior citizens to cover the expenses of, of spaying and neutering. Believe me, it's cheaper to have your dog and cat spayed and neutered than to let them have puppies or kittens because you're feeding a lot of puppies and kittens, you're feeding a pregnant mother. If any of the girls here who have had babies, you know you're eating for two. Things you can do that are not difficult. You can capture a feral animal, you can rent a cage or you can buy a cage from the Humane Society. It's $5 to rent one for a day, or you can buy one for $40. And they will usually take the animal from you for free and have it spayed and neutered. If you don't want to do that, there are other things you can do. You can donate some money. You can give toys, sheets, old towels, newspapers, even your lean cuisine bowls. Wash them out, take them. They need them for pet dishes. The benefits of having your dog and cat spay, spayed and neutered not only affect you, but it affects us all, it affects the pet, it affects all of us. Animals have a better life and are less prone to get into trouble, and we enjoy them more. In conclusion, I hope you understand the significance of having a pet and the importance of having it spayed and neutered. Animal shelters all over the world are overcrowded, and it is our responsibility to alleviate the burden of pet overpopulation. Controlling the pet population affects not only their well-being, but ours. <laughs>